well done for being able to get here. I understand it's Anna Joy's birthday today as well as being Christmas Day. Wow. <laughs> do you celebrate at another time of the year as well? Or is this the day where you do everything? You do it in the summer. That's the way, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, happy birthday for today as well. Celebrating uh, the birthday of Jesus as well. Of course, we don't know for certain if he was born on this day. He probably wasn't. But you know what? Does it matter? The fact is, we are here together to recognise the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is wonderful to do that today. So a happy Christmas to you. I hope that um, your plans have not been too wrecked by COVID. Um, ours have to some extent, but that's another story for anyone who hears our, want to hear our woes. Um, but, <laughs> but it's great that you're able to be here and worshipping with us today. My name is Steve uh, Jenkins, by the way, if any of you don't know me, and I'm the lead uh, of Upfield Baptist Church. Um, just one notice. You have to have notices, don't you? Just one. We are not meeting tomorrow morning, okay, as a church. So just in case you turn up here, the gates will be locked and you will not be allowed in. Um, so uh, we will not be meeting, just so you know. We've been lighting Advent candles through uh, the season of Advent, and so we're going to light uh, all of them this morning. And I've asked Deborah if she would come forward, light the candles, and then uh, say the prayer for us. That's the first problem. Christmas Day candle stands for Jesus. Jesus, you came to be hope and light in our darkness. Jesus, you came to be peace in our conflicts. Jesus, you came to be joy in our sadness and to bring your love in our fears. Today, we celebrate your birth. Thank you for your saving grace. Amen. Thank you, Deborah. Many centuries before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah recorded many prophetic words concerning his coming. And um, one such prophecy is found in Isaiah chapter 9 and verses 6 and 7. And I want to read those to you now. I'm sure, well, I'd be very surprised if um, most of you don't know these words. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's pray again. Father God, thank you for those wonderful words brought to your people so many centuries before Jesus' birth. Lord, we can take comfort from them in so many ways, not least because you knew what you were doing. It was planned way ahead. In, flat, in fact, it was planned before the beginning of time. And we bless you, Lord, for those words, those titles given to Jesus, even then, and for all that they mean for us, those that know you and love you. Father, we praise you and we thank you that we can come together today on this day that we, that we recognise as a, the birthday of Jesus and to be able to sing your praises and to think and reflect 
on some of the aspects of this amazing story, this journey to the salvation of the world. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Our first, unfortunately, we don't have any musicians, live musicians with us today. We were going to have some, then we weren't, and then we were, and then, now we aren't. Um, so we haven't. Um, but we are going to sing. We do have um, some songs to sing to. Um, the first one is that wonderful carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. So let's stand, if you can, with masks on and join the singing this together. Thank you. Aid is going to come and uh, do the reading for us. Thank you, Aid. Thanks, Steve. Hi, everyone. I'm Aid. I'm from King's Church. On behalf of uh, King's Church, thanks for having us this morning. Few though we are, um, don't take it personally. Just lots of other things going on, apparently, <laughs> family and other things besides. But we are one family in Jesus. It's really great to be able to celebrate this special day with you. Uh, I'm reading from. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Praise God. Thank you, Aid. Great. I'm going to watch a short video now. Um, it's a video that uh, challenges us to think again about the real meaning of Christmas, and that's no bad thing, I think. So this is called Christmas Calendar Countdown. The 1st of December. What's the first thing you remember? I should really have everything wrapped by today. The house should be clean, the toys need putting away. Oh yes, and the advent calendars, they need to be out. And everyone's already got their lights out and about, and the cards, they... Stop. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. Two parents, Mary and Joseph, three gifts. But don't you see there's so much more than this? Four-legged creature carrying the king, five points of a unique star seen from afar, because Isaiah 9, 6, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And Mary wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them, Luke 2, 7. So animals surrounded him as his mate, and he lay in their food box where they normally ate. See what I did there? Pretty good to be fair. Anyway, 9,125 miles away, wise men were travelling. You see, they didn't actually get to Jesus on the day, but back to Bethlehem. Late at night, gone 10, a multitude of holy men from heaven in Luke 2.11 proclaimed to the shepherds, Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So twelve sheep and their shepherds came at the time. Maybe more or maybe less, but it works with the rhyme. Thirteen, the outcast there first, may seem unlucky for some, but God welcomes the unpopular, divides are overcome. Isaiah 7.14 They all look down at Emmanuel, God with us, at the centre of the scene, held by a 15-year-old mother, yep, she was only in her teens, the king of the universe in her hands, who made the seas and the mountains and all the lands. 16 days gone, Christmas is soon. 17 days, but do you forget Jesus is more than just a figurine in a wooden, old nativity scene? This Christmas, 2 Peter 3.18, do you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ? Do you truly appreciate that this baby is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Revelation 19. Or do you just glance at the 20 cute baby fingers and toes? Because Christmas is more than the cute little baby we visit church for in fancy clothes. God, he really does love the world, that he gave his son to live and then die and then arise. So if we believe, then we can live forever without compromise, because death's defeated and God's won through Jesus Christ, his only son. 21 the sun 22 for you 23 so we 24 dead before 25 can be alive 
in Christ. Happy Christmas. Great, thank you. We're going to sing a medley of three Christmas songs now, um, and um, I'm just going to allow there to be a pause between each one. And if you feel like you want to pray out loud to thank the Lord for Christmas or whatever, then please do that. There won't be masses of time in between, uh, but if, you, if one or two of you like to do that, that would be great. I just ask under the mask, you'll have to speak up so other people can hear your prayers, but uh, it'll be great if we can do that. So our first song is going to be Well Shepherds Watch. Let's stand, and if we can, and sing this together. shepherds we thank you for the way they were included in this story lord those people that were down on their luck in those times and we thank you lord that you died for each and every one of us yeah lord you came for each and every one of us yeah. lord whatever our status is in this life and, and the pecking order of this world it doesn't matter lord because we're equal in your sight and we thank you jesus for that this morning Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus, that we have the ability to meet together here in freedom and to call out your name in praise. Yeah. One kingdom. And we bless your holy name, Lord, on this special day that we celebrate with that. Amen. 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 Hark the herald angels sing. Let's sing this together. Reconciled, joyful. Love. 
praise you, God Almighty, for this amazing event that we're celebrating today of you becoming a man, you being born as a baby, you uh, becoming yes. like us so that we could come to know you, the one who made us. Thank you, God, that you're the creator, but you're also the one who has brought about the way for mankind to know you, the great God. And we thank you for salvation. And we thank you that there is a king who's alive on the throne. He reigns supreme. And that's Jesus Christ, the one who came as a babe. He now reigns in majesty, splendor, and is worthy of all our worship and adulation. We say thank you, King Jesus, for all you have done for us. Amen. 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 Sing the song, Mary, did you know? Heavenly Father, we thank you that whether or not Mary knew those things, and certainly she knew something, but we do. We know all those things, Lord. And we are so grateful to you once again for Jesus Christ coming and being born amongst us and proving to humanity that you care, that you love, 
that you've overcome, that there is eternal life for all who would believe in you. We bless you, Lord, once again. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> I heard a story this week. You might have heard it too. Um, the story was from, from Kentucky in the US. Um, was of two babies placed in a bath uh, with blankets and a Bible by their grandmother just a few minutes before a tornado struck. Um, the tornado destroyed the house and it lifted the bath off the ground and carried it away. And the grandmother had no idea where it was until the rescuers arrived. They came on the scene and they found the bath and they found the two very young children, one was a baby, two very young children in the bath. And it's all recorded on one of those body cams. You can watch it on the BBC News if you haven't done so and you want to do so. And one of the most amazing bits for me, and obviously the fact that there was a Bible there in the bath with the blankets and the babies, great alliteration, isn't it? <laughs> the, one of the amazing things for me is that the, to hear the grandmother thanking Jesus for saving her two grandchildren and praising him first and foremost before she even had them in her arms. Wonderful news from God. And even sometimes, even the truth is unbelievable. Really unbelievable. You know, the shepherds, they were on a hillside just outside of Bethlehem and heard this unbelievable news, but true, a message about another baby. This baby wasn't found in a bath, but was found in an equally odd place, an animal's eating trough. That was the sign that they were given of how they'd find this child. You see, it wasn't a normal place that even in those days anyone would consider to put a baby, a newborn baby. And they were told, that's the sign that you'll find this child, they were told that this child would be the saviour of the world. Because the prophet Isaiah, who'd foresaw, as we know from the reading we had earlier, hundreds of years before, that this child would grow to become the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, who would fulfil all those titles that were given to him. Was it believable? At least the shepherds had enough good sense or maybe they were scared, I don't know, by the angels into going and trying to find this child. And they discovered it. They believed. I, doubt, I have no doubt that he was easy to find. <laughs> For all sorts of reasons, not least because of where he was lying. An animal's eating trough. Now, these shepherds might never have heard of the prophetic words of, uh, of Isaiah. They wouldn't have been learned men, necessarily. But they would have seen something in this child, something about the angelic host praising God, to realise that this was not normal. And what do they do? They head off, searching for people to tell them, come and see this child, not really knowing why. Come and see this child. He's got to be seen, to be believed. Many people would say that's not a true story, that's not believable. Maybe people would say the two children caught up in the bath and flown across the landscape, that's not believable either, but we know it's to be true. This is true as well, my friends, and you know that, most of you. Because it's more than just a remarkable birth if we accept Isaiah's prophetic words along with all the other claims that can be placed with Jesus. We cannot leave the story just at the manger. We have to go beyond to look at the man and to look at his claims. You know, most of our society leaves the Christmas story here with the child in the manger. Yet to do that is fatal. We have no hope, therefore, 
of eternal life. It doesn't address those titles that Jesus was given. So I ask you, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, to reflect again today and over the next few days. What has he done for you? What does he mean to you? Does it mean perhaps that you should live differently? And if you're still uncertain of the claims of Jesus, then take some time again to reflect on who he claimed to be and what he said. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Brutal? Certainly. True? I believe so. But that's for each one of us to decide. He gives us that option. Let's pray. Lord, there is a challenge from the child who's in the manger because the scriptures teach us of how he grew up and what he became of his life. And in that video that we saw earlier, we were reminded of that as well. And so as we celebrate the birth of a baby today, we cannot separate it from the man he became and the saviour that he is and the Lord of the universe he became. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes when you hear the Christmas story year after year, as many of us do, it can lose something of the shock value, the baby in the manger, for example. Yeah, we all know those words, don't we? So the following video, the short video that we're about to watch, portrays the shepherds telling others in the streets about the newborn baby and encouraging them to come and see him. It's set in a contemporary context. Let's watch that now. Thank you, John. Excuse me. Love the song, by the way. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not after change. Look. Don't be afraid. It's good news, and it's for everybody. Look, I get it. You don't believe me. I don't blame you. You don't know me. I don't know what some people say about people like me. Rough Rub sleepers, sleepers, street sellers, grubby vendors, dregs of society, right? Look, I'll level with you. I'm a nobody. But last night, I met somebody, and I've got to tell everybody. No, wait, please, just... Please, just please, give me just two, two minutes. minutes. Seriously. Me and my mate, we're getting set up for the night, right? Then this this, this light, light and it just, just stuns us. us. All I can describe it is like God's glory surrounds us. Sounds crazy, right? The most captivating character you'd ever laid eyes on. Voice like an angel, exhilarating and terrifying, breathtaking and beautiful. We were bricking it. He says, don't, don't be, be afraid. afraid. It's good news and it's for everybody. He says, a direct line to David's lineage has arrived to answer the SOS signal of our hearts. He's come, He's come to, to rescue. rescue. Then he tells us to go see for ourselves. Camped in an underpass, covered with rags, you'll find him in a tent, wrapped up in a sleeping bag. You probably think I've been on the spices, right? I think it too. I mean, who delivers a message like that to somebody, to somebody like, like this? this? You're right. I'm a nobody. But what he said kept ringing in my ears so clearly. Don't, Don't be, be afraid. afraid. It's good news and it's for everybody. Look, we, we might be a bunch of nobodies, but nobody was stopping us from searching out this somebody. And then these rough sleepers met a saviour. Street sellers met a king. And we knew we had to savour this moment because it, it changes, changes everything. everything. And it dawned on me, he's come for the nobodies. He's come to show them that to him there's somebody, to one day become a nobody, to offer up his status of somebody, so everybody who reaches out to him can be part of his family. Camped in an underpass, covered with rags, this is good news, wrapped up in a sleeping bag. 
look, I'm not talking bone, but do yourself a favor. Don't just take the word of this rough sleeping stranger. Come see for yourself. Come and meet him. Come and meet the savior. I quite find it helpful to see that uh, you know, presented in a, a different way. And it reminds me again of the truth of those scriptures. Our final song this Christmas morning uh, reminds us of the Magi and the Shepherds' devotion, a bit like that, to Jesus. as They realise something of what he means to them. But it also poses a question. What can I bring? What can you bring? You may not know this song, but it's quite easy to pick up. So let's stand together now and sing, What Can I Bring? Father, I want to thank you for everybody who's here today, who's come to celebrate the birth of Jesus, to know the reason for the season. Lord, I pray for each one of us that we would 
uh, look again to our Saviour for our inspiration to live our lives for him, to serve him in the way that he served us in coming as a baby and growing as a man and giving his life. Well, I pray for us all as we go and celebrate this Christmas with our friends and our family. Lord, would you enable us to demonstrate to them as well the love of Christ from our hearts. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Folks, thank you so much for coming here today. I hope you have a great Christmas and um, a wonderful new year. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome.